Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and today's tool tip is building a crosscut sled for the table saw. Now, I don't have a plan or dimensions or anything specific. I'm going to sort of make it up as I go, but it's not really my plan or my idea. This isn't a Polk crosscut sled per se. Uh, the, the information for making them is out there. It's kind of generic. Stuff. So I think I'm going to make it about the width of the saw, which is you know, 22 and a half, 23, somewhere in there. If I, if I made it say just the width or the, you know, the front to back width of the table, then when I pulled it back to have the blade clear the material, you know, there's possibility to get back in here. And so I'm just sort of balancing it and trying to get the piece set up. So really what I want is when it's, I want it to be able to rest up on the saw with the blade in it and still have room inside of it uh, to, to set up my cut here. I want to have it cut all the way through at the maximum height potential of the blade that allows me a, a taller cut. And so this is three quarter. So the tallest cut I could get with a three quarter base would be around, oh, close to two and a half. So I'll be able to get to two and three quarter if I, if I make the, the base out of half inch. I'm using AC plywood, so that means uh, one side has a, is a sanded good side. So what I'm going to do is uh, start by putting the A, uh, the a side down. Uh, just to make this even a little bit smoother, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to sand this all the way down to, uh, probably down to 320. This is wood glide, and this will just help a little bit closing that grain up. In this case, I'm just going to put a single rail in. That's all I need. So I'm going to take a, just a scribe and mark right where that will intersect. The miter slot is a half an inch deep, and I don't want the rail to hit the bottom. I don't want that added friction, plus I want room for dust to, to be able to, uh, you know, move out of there and not be, you know, trapping the, the, um, the rail. So what I'm going to do is uh, use a, a piece of three-quarter plywood ripped down to three-quarters wide and I'm going to run the greens, I'm going to run it, I'm going to rip it this way so the grain or the laminations are uh, horizontal and because you'll get less expansion in the width of the wood than you will uh, through the lamination. So I'm going to rip it three-quarters wide and that'll give me a half an inch uh, piece of uh, wood and I'm not going to attach it right to the base because then it would bottom out or come close to bottoming it out in the miter track. So I'm actually going to run a three quarter inch dado down this and that'll do two things. One, I'll, I'll make it a quarter inch deep and so that means my rail will only hang down a quarter of an inch and give me almost a quarter of an inch of space beneath. But it'll also give me a nice straight line to fit it into when I run this through the, the against the fence on the um, Table, on the uh, router table, I'll get a nice straight edge. So as, as much as possible, uh, I've made my marks where it goes, as much as possible I want to uh, be uh, square to the back edge or parallel to the blade. But if I'm off a little bit, if I'm not exactly perfect, when I, when I make the cut, the first cut, when the rail is installed and I push it through here, and I make that very first cut, it's gonna cut this board completely in half after I have the front and back bridge installed. Um, that's gonna automatically reference uh, the rail that I put into the blade. It will be parallel uh, just by default. So the bridge that I'll put across the front and the back of the sled, the, the top portion above the blade will be the only part of the sled that connects the two sides. So I'll wanna make sure that that's pretty strong. I'm planning on uh, laminating two pieces of three quarter ply to make the front and the back. So I'll get a good inch and a half thick piece. And I'll also want the section where the blade goes through front and back. I'll, I'll wanna have probably about two inches uh, of, 
of wood left after the, after the cut. So I'll make it about two inches taller than the maximum height of the blade. Four and three quarter is how tall I want to make the, the front and the back bridge. Now that I have the four pieces made up for the uh, front and back bridge, I want to laminate them together. But before I do that, I will want to kind of scallop them down a bit so the middle will be at the um, full height for the bridge portion. But then when I'm working the sled, I, won't, I don't want it that bulky. Uh, I'll also know the blade is kind of going through the middle, so if it's, if it's uh, sculpted down a bit, I'll have a better ability to clamp there and also to put my hands there. And I know if my hands are riding in there on either side, I'm, I'm far away from the blade. Cool. So what I think I'll do is, is uh, make a router template and then just cut all four of them uh, on the router table. So I have a piece of half inch material which is cut exactly the same uh, width and height and I'll make a template to finalize those. So I think what I want to do is uh, the blade, uh, a blade on a table saw is not usually centered so I want to figure out, I know that this is going to be centered so the blade is going to cut through about there. Now what I'm going to do is glue these together, so now I'll let them dry overnight and come back and finish the uh, project tomorrow. So rather than spending a bunch of time sanding this, I'm just going to run them through the uh, router one more time and using the top bearing I'll run them around the top that'll cut the glue line off and then I'll flip them over if I've misaligned them a little bit they're pretty well aligned but if I have it'll it'll just uh, flush them all up again I've got Before I attach the uh, front and back bridge, I'm going to cut a dust gutter along this inside edge. So now I'll clamp, I'll glue and clamp the, uh, the back bridge, flush along the back edge, and then I'll screw it on. So I'll put glue on, clamp it in place, and then I'll screw it on, and then I can just The uh, front bridge, since it's also, besides being a bridge to hold the sled together, is also the fence. <clears throat> so it's critical that this be square to the blade. So this one will not be attached with glue. At any and this end will actually be my pivot point. This is Now I'm going to make the, the cut that's going to cut this board in half and cut up through both the, uh, the front and the back uh, bridge. I've raised the blade all the way up so that I'll make my maximum cut at this time. And it's important in doing this that you recognize that the blade is going to come through this back side here. So you want to be careful if you're focusing up here and you don't see it. I'll have my hands over here. Now the last thing I'll do after everything is squared up and done is I'll build a guard uh, for this so that uh, they, you know, my hand won't accidentally get in the way. But while it's under construction, this is going to be a spinning blade coming out of here. I want to be really careful and pay attention to that. It's very easy to get focused in here and, and, and have your hand back here, and, and that's not good. Because most of the cutting I'm going to use this for is going to be to cut small pieces, and most of them are going to be upright. Being really close to square is going to be good enough. For just kind of a rough, quick way, you could take a framing square, put it against your, your fence, and check it against your blade, and even against the cut that you made, 
And, well, I'll tell you, from, from this, I wouldn't need to make any adjustments at all. But that's uh, a little bit sloppy. But I learned this method from William Ng. He does, uh, wood, teaches woodworking and he does works on YouTube and, and, and that's where I learned it. In fact, I'll put a link in the description to William's website. Ng is spelled N-G, so it's William N-G. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do is take this board and I just grabbed a piece of scrap. I don't know how long or wide it is. The only thing is, is I want the first cut to be on the long edge. Because I'm gonna do some, some subtracting and division, I'm gonna start this first cut I'm gonna mark, and actually I'm gonna mark it as an A because that's my, uh, I'm gonna subtract B from A when this is all done. So I'll mark them so they, I won't get turned around. So I'm gonna uh, cut this four times. Now the, obviously if I add all four of these together, it, it has to add up to 360 degrees. And if I'm off, uh, three of them would be the same and the fourth one would be the difference off and we could spend our time worrying about angles and what angle the fits needs to move. But there's a little simpler way that, that William Ng came up with. I've got my A and my B mark. And what I want to do is just measure the difference in the width of A and the width of B. And I want to do that with a caliper. And I'm going to use inches and I want to measure, you know, to thousandths of an inch. My caliper doesn't go that wide. What I want to do is make a fifth cut parallel to the first cut. 1.625. It's 1.680. Now I'm going to subtract B from A. And I know in this case that B is a larger number, so I'm gonna get a negative uh, number here. Negative 0 0.055. Now that error is a, is a multiple of four. It's four times my actual error because I remember I cut you know, all four corners. What I want to do with this 0 0.055 is divide it by four. It gives me an, an error of 0 0.01375. The exact error is over the length of the board. doesn't matter how long the board is, I just want to measure it. So I'll divide my error by the number of inches. My error per inch 0.0008551. My pivot point, I'm not gonna move the right side of the fence, it's gonna stay fixed. So I'm gonna move this side. So what I wanna do is take the number of inches between this pivot point, which is one inch in, and this one inch in where the other point is that I'm going to move it from. So that, uh, I measured in an inch on both sides of the sled, so I know that I've got an inch there, and I've got an inch here. And the distance between the two points is 20 and a half inches. So I will multiply my error times 20.5 and I have an error of negative 0175. Now, a negative number means that, a negative number means the fence is too low, too far this way. So I need to move it up. If it were a positive number, it would need the fence was, is too high or too far forward and I need to move it back. So, so what I wanna do is, I've got a board, it doesn't matter how wide or how long it is, it's just a piece of scrap I had, and I cut, cut it on the miter saw so I have a point. And that point is gonna go right at that one inch mark. That's where I am going to move the fence to in my case. So I'm gonna set this point up above here 0 0.0175 and how am i going to do that i'm going to use a feeler gauge this is automotive feeler gauge 
that you can, you know, they're four dollars a piece and you probably should have one in your shop anyway. I'm just going to snug it up so that the um, tip is just touching the feeler gauge and squeezing it to the fence but not crushing the wood on the tip because I could throw it off even more if I, if I did that. And again, I'm just touching it. Clamp this in place. After it's clamped, I'll just double check it, make sure it just fits in there. It's like you're gapping a spark plug. I'll unscrew the fence and move it till it touches. That's not much of a movement, and so I don't want to use the same screw hole because there's a chance to pull, just pull the fence back. So now I'm going to move the fence right up against that point, and I'm going to clamp it there before I drill it. And of course, I'll be putting more screws in the bottom here after I confirm that this is right where I want it. So I'll take my same test board and I'll mark it again. A, B. So my error at this point is a negative number of 0 0.0015. The tape measure doesn't pick up the difference. So for what I'm doing, that's accurate enough. Uh, I might uh, run this through the process one more time if I wanted to uh, zero it in. Now I'm just going to screw the bottom off. Okay, so I'm squared up and ready to go. I could start using it, but I want to build a guard. So to put the guard on, I just took some uh, thin metal blades I had just to have it riding just slightly above the table saw so I don't have uh, any added friction there. And I've glued the front edge and I'm going to clamp it. After the glue on the guard dries, my crosscut sled will be ready to go. Again, there's a lot more sophisticated ones out there and you can look on YouTube and find them. But if you need a simple basic sled, particularly one that you can move around to, to the job site, hopefully what you've learned here will help. And thanks for taking the time to watch.